Welcome. We'll start with the question, what is knowledge exchange? Generally speaking, it is literally all exchange of knowledge between people. The best known example of this is teaching, as universities have done for centuries. But in this course, we focus on collaboration between academia and outside organizations, more specifically, commercial partners. In academia, the researchers, students and other staff produce a lot of results. This is relevant and important for the individuals involved, but if this knowledge doesn't spread, its impact can remain quite limited. Say, somebody finds a way to cure a certain kind of cancer, but for whatever reason, her insights are never shared. This insight, although not a cure yet, will certainly not have an impact. Publishing it in a scientific journal is of course a way to share such insights. But even then, it may still have little impact. In this example, further development of the insight may require effort and expertise of companies. And these companies may not read the publication, or even more damaging, they may not wish to invest in the development if they do. They will only invest if they believe they can receive a return on that investment. Publication without protection may obviate that. Now this is a simplified example, of course, but this is true for most research results, even the things that don't look all that relevant to the outside world at first. And while research results might not produce economic gain, they can lead to a better understanding of society. Understanding which, in turn, may improve government policies or help solve societal challenges. Clearly, this is not a one-way street. Companies, organizations and governments can use research from academia to further their understanding, improve their performance or make money. Academics can be inspired by the challenges citizens, companies and governments face. These problems can be distilled into research questions. Fundamental research to help tackle societal problems, as the famous French academic Louis Pasteur did in the 19th century. Being inspired by society can be a powerful perspective. However, to translate inspiration into research requires insight into the societal context of the problem. Solving it will require understanding the issues and desires of stakeholders. Working with them. To understand the problem or having your solution used will necessitate effective interaction. You need to speak the language of your stakeholders to effectively work together. In other words, what is needed to make successful knowledge exchange a reality? From the academic's point of view, first, you need to define exactly what knowledge is at your disposal. Secondly, you need to map all the people and organizations that might be interested in this knowledge. Then you need to learn about the legal aspects of collaboration, so you know what may be protected and how. Understand the value and utility of the knowledge for your partner. Last but not least, you need to be able to communicate your knowledge in a manner your intended partner understands and recognizes. Asking yourself questions about perspective and understanding of your partner helps to identify opportunities and risks. What is their goal? Is it money, helping certain patients, ridding the world of a certain problem or creating a pleasant living environment? How do they measure success? For example, it can be profit, quality of life, curing a disease, saving a species or winning an election. What is the scope? Some partners may expect that you eradicate the problem. Others will just want to understand it. Who decides whether the goal has been reached? For some it's their customers, but it could be patients, citizens, shareholders, donors, etc. And what are their timelines? They may expect an answer in weeks, or, or years, or before the next election, or the next annual report. For all of these questions, what are your answers? and do they match up? Clearly, this is asking a lot of an individual academic. Universities and colleges around the world have recognized this. To help their students and scientists and to maximize the research impact, often called valorization in mainland Europe, 
universities have set up offices and centers with specialized support staff. These services come in different shapes and sizes and in the next video we will go into two different principles on which they are organized. Until then.